Good afternoon. This is Dr. Christine Sauer uh, with a Healthy Alternative, Your Quality of Life. And I'm very excited today to be with Professor Carolyn Fitzpatrick. She's Assistant Professor at the Université de Saint-Anne in Nova Scotia, where she teaches psychology and directs the Laboratoire d'études en petite enfance. That's a, a, a ch early childhood lab, right? She is also an appointed research fellow at the University of Johannesburg with the Center for Education Practice Research. Her work addresses the childhood origins of education and health inequities. The goal of her research is to inform social policies and public health initiatives aimed at improving child physical and mental health. Now that's a very important topic and I'm happy to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here with you. So Carolyn, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you, where did you grow up and how did you end up being a professor at the University St. Dan? It's a Francophone university. Well, um, I grew up in Montreal, so I grew up in a very bilingual family, in a very bilingual community. Um, did part of my studies in French and part in English. Um, and as I was studying um, in CEGEP, which is our, our stage between high school and university in Quebec, I fell in love with social sciences and in particular with social injustice and inequality. Uh, so as I developed a passion for that, for a better understanding um, inequalities uh, and ways to try to address these, I sort of learned, um, and it's a bit sad, that a lot of inequalities start very young in life and they actually originate in early childhood. So that's when I really decided that I wanted to pursue uh, higher studies in child development. Wow, that is amazing. So do you have a family of your own? Uh, no, I don't. Not yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Just being a curious interviewer. Yeah. Now, how did you end up at the Université de Saint-Anne? Well, I mean, um, I'd been in Montreal um, doing, finished wrapping up my second postdoc internship. Uh, and I saw this wonderful opportunity to move to a place that was very exotic to me. So a place right, right by the sea uh, in Nova Scotia, which is a province that I found very beautiful. Um, and just an opportunity to begin a career as a professor in psychology. So I just thought it looked like um, it would be a wonderful change. Now, you initiated a study on screen time and child's development, especially in the time of COVID-19. What is that all about and why did you focus on the young children and the screen time? Absolutely. So um, I've been involved in studying screen time for, for quite a while now. Um, initially, my research was concerned with, uh, because it started several years ago, we were examining screen time, but what that meant at the time was looking at mostly television. Um, and in that research, my colleagues and I found that consistently, the more time that children spend in front of televisions in early childhood, um, the more we observed sort of detriments to their development. Um, and across, this was across uh, cognition, so their ability to learn math uh, and their language abilities in terms of also their social development and also in terms of their physical development so their development of motor skills um, their body weight and their ability to perform in sports um, so things have changed rapidly over the 10 years when it, when it comes to media use and screen time so um, in approximately five years ago i became interested in better understanding well how how about these new screens these mobile devices that are more interactive what is what are their influence on development. Um, so that sort of sparked my curiosity and better understanding in a very comprehensive way how screen time is influencing children. Um, and recently, having received some funding, I was conducting the research and then sort of as a natural experiment, as we call it in research, the COVID crisis um, happened. So this is uh, providing, I mean, extremely challenging times, but also providing maybe an opportunity, opportunity to understand how um, families are using screen times as entertainment, as educational tools, and also as, uh, as a way to cope with some of the, the stress um, and the important difficulties that uh, they might be facing. So um, that's one of, the, one of the reasons why my team and I are especially interested in understanding 
media use during these uh, during these times. And that's fascinating. And uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of my brain and mental health coach with Dr. Daniel Amen, and he said that uh, if a child between the ages of zero and five has more than half an hour of screen time combined a day, they have a 70% higher risk of getting ADHD or ADD. Did you find a similar correlation? Um, so what we've been, uh, what we looked at in our, some of our, our earlier work um, was mainly again here was it was television time, so screen time, mm -hmm. and yes, there was an increased risk for developing attention problems and some behavior problems. Um, now after that, uh, in our sample, which is a population-based sample, so we looked at all children uh, combined, um, we found that the risks become higher as screen time exceeds the recommendations of. Uh, the World Health Organization, which is one hour a day for, for that okay. age group. Um, that being said, there are specific children that might be more vulnerable to screens, uh, and there are um, also some contents that are more uh, harmful and some that are more beneficial. So if a child is getting a steady diet of violent content and fast-paced cartoons and action uh, type of contents early on, this is likely to be more damaging to attentional systems than a child who um, might be a bit less prone to distractibility and attention problems that's getting a mainly educational diet. So it's important, I think, to also take into account um, the content of media that they're receiving, mm -hmm. um, as well as the context. So if, if a child is consistently viewing media on their own or using media on their own, um, the consequences are likely to be very different from a child who's more likely to co-view with parents or to use media in the context of interactions. Now let's go a little bit more in detail because that is that is extremely important and interesting and from observing parents I've noticed that many use their cell phone or tablet as a babysitter and that can be good in my opinion. Is it is it good when parents guide the kids or is it okay when the kids just pick what they want to see? So it's, um, it's, it's absolutely understandable that there are times when parents need to use screens as a, as a babysitter. Um, sure. And I think this has probably become uh, really obvious to parents during the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, parents are working from home, preschools, daycares are closed. Maybe there's another kid that needs to get homeschooled. So uh, I think that that's, uh, that can be, to the extent that it's beneficial for family functioning, I think that that needs to be taken into account. And sure. um, parents shouldn't be, uh, led to be shamed for, for doing it. No, parents uh, are in an extremely difficult situation sometimes. The kids are home, they both have to work from home, that doesn't work well. And no child care um, available. Absolutely. Uh, however, I think uh, it's also important to educate parents that if they want children to um, be to benefit from the educational features of certain applications and certain contents, the best way to enhance the educational aspects is to co-view with their child uh, and to ask questions, to have conversations, to point out certain things. So if they really want to maximize those benefits, uh, co-viewing is really the, um, the way to go. Um, and with, with older children, maybe co-viewing is not possible, but there's also parental mediation, which can involve asking questions about what types of content, what types of programs, or what types of social media children are using can also be a great way to protect some of the harms and to increase some of the positive aspects. Now that's really interesting. Uh, tell us an example of, of children. Uh, what happens if they have too much screen time in, in, in practical? How can parents know if too much is too much for their kid? What behaviors does a child show? So there are, uh, there are some general guidelines and I'll, I'll explain those in a second, but every child can be slightly different. Uh, some children mm -hmm. are gonna be more sensitive than others and parents are, I think, it's important to say are ultimately the expert on their child so they should also sort of um, trust themselves in, in that sense but so for children uh, below the age of two what the world health organization recommends is uh, no screen time at all so no media use with uh, with the exception of video chat technologies uh, or something that might be more more uh, more in the lines of listening to music so mm -hmm. music um, listening to stories video chat technologies can be healthy substitutes and uh, are not um, 
or not uh... I have a funny story of my own son when he was six no, no, he was a year and a half and we had a big old radio you know those very old ones and we put that in his room and he could search for music that he liked guess what he liked Mozart <laughs> Wonderful. It was very interesting for me what, what he actually chose. He loved Mozart. And that, yeah, that can be a really interesting activity. So the, it's, the child develops some autonomy. They're, they're controlling the, the content. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not, I mean, listening to music is by no way a, a media that we would um, consider a risk for development. Um, after that, between the ages of two and five, uh, children should be exposed to no more than one hour per day. And uh, this, as much as possible, should be educational content. Uh, obviously, no what violent is educational content. Educational content. Is that Sesame Street? Is that educational content? Sesame Street would probably be uh, one of the best options. Uh, so educational or at least child-directed uh, content. So avoid uh, adult uh, types of contents, any kind of violence uh, for, for that age group. Mm. Um, and as much as possible, to, uh, to encourage a good night's sleep, it's probably best to avoid screens before, one hour before uh, bedtime. Well, that's a general recommendation even for adults. Absolutely, absolutely. Because of the blue light inhibiting the melatonin in our brain, and that's very important. And I yeah. agree, it's even more important for children. Absolutely. Uh, and then beyond that, five and up, the recommendation is no more than two hours per day. Um, and um, that's obviously combined this screen time, right? TV and computers and devices? Yes, yes. Combined screen time and this generally um, uh, would exclude time spent on a laptop, a computer for homework. So yeah. that could be taken out of the uh, taken out of the equation. Uh, that being said, you're asking about some signs that children might be getting too much screen time. Um, the, the lights in certain screens can be extremely difficult on children's eyes. Uh, so that can be something also to look out for, especially now that they're getting screen time during school hours, screen time during leisure. Um, it, it's, it, it's not, um, it's not cost-free for children's uh, visual development. So that's also something possibly to, to keep in mind and to ensure that children are, um, I think as important as limiting screen time is ensuring that they have enough time for healthy activities, healthy amount of sleep. So uh, for young children between 10 and 13 hours a day, for older children, the, the 10 hours, physical activity at least one hour per day, time to play outside and time to uh, socialize um, and engage in imaginative forms of play. Imaginative forms of play would be Lego bricks, <laughs> and drawing, doing crafts, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's yeah. important that parents realize that because I know that so many parents have their kids on the devices all day basically not just two hours. It will be a shock to know for many parents that maybe are not aware how harmful that can be. Let us know a little bit more about your current research project. So um, in my current research project, my team and I are aiming to collect information on 300 Nova Scotia families. So we're interested in uh, preschool age children, but also their families' media habits. So um, what type of devices they have in the home, how frequently they use them, uh, what are parents' attitudes and practices around media use in the family. So how old are preschoolers for your study? How so we are, are we're looking for, for children between the ages of two and four and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gathering all this, all this information. Uh, we're also going to, um, we're also going to look at children's language development and their development of executive function skills, which is the ability to um, concentrate and control behavior and control attention. So we're looking at those very important skills. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna look at that over a period of two years. So we're gonna gather information now during the summer, follow up with parents again six months from now, and then follow up uh, hopefully a third time approximately a year from now. So we'll okay, have- So how do you assess it with questionnaires or do you do tests? Yeah, so we, we're using, so for, for the media use, we have a questionnaire. We also ask parents to complete a digital diary. So 24 hour recall of everything they did in the previous day. Uh, and that allows us to gather information without them having a chance to forget. Um, when did they use media? 
uh, not only like not only as a primary activity, but also did they use media during supper time or did they use media um, during leisure time? So uh, media as a primary, but also a secondary activity. Uh, when they used media specifically, what was it on what type of device or what type of application or what type of show? Um, and also, what was the context? So was the child uh, using media uh, to keep busy? Was the child watching uh, a program with their grandparent or a sibling? So information on how long, what the media use was, and what the context was. Uh -huh. uh, and we're also asking parents to, uh, to get a better idea of family media use to install an application on their telephone for about two days. So we can see, well, uh, during the day, when do parents use their use their phone more more and what type of activities are they doing on their phone okay that's that's quite interesting and uh, why did you focus on the young children well um so you you might know this being in the health field but early childhood is one of the times in our life where the where our brain is undergoing the most rapid development absolutely um and during the preschool years a lot of this development is happening in the prefrontal cortex, so the frontal area of the brain. And this part of the brain is, is essential, extremely important for the development of language skills. So it's what's going to support eventually the ability to read and write. Um, it's also important for planning, decision making, and for the ability to control attention, behavior, and emotion. So it really is um, an important and a very, very important time for, for brain development. So as children develop, this um, prefrontal cortex develops in part from maturation and in part from genetic reasons, but also depends tremendously on the environment. Yeah. Um, and the best, probably the best environmental influence is a reciprocal sensitive exchange with the caregiver. So if children don't get enough interaction with caregivers, don't get enough high quality interactions um, that are tailored, sensitive to their developmental state um, and to their sh own personal strengths and weaknesses, well, that development doesn't happen at an optimal rate. So I think it's really important to look at children during that sort of sensitive time uh, because this might be the period in life where media is likely to have the most profound, either positive or negative influence. Wow, yeah, that is extremely interesting. And the results of the study hopefully will be published in both languages, English and French. Yes, um, we'll, we will do, um, I think, as, as is important to do with most research that is, um, I think, highly of potential importance to, to parents. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be most likely scientific publications, which are typically in English, but then a series of, we hope, uh, reports and knowledge translation activities, talks, communications, um, media releases, which will be in both languages to reach uh, parents in both. Wow, that will be extremely important and extremely interesting because there's not that many out there I think about screen time and little children and there's so much use of screen time by little children and sometimes it gets actually addictive even for little children did you see that I I've noticed that sometimes when I watch parents the kid starts to demand to get a screen and the parents give in because they don't want to put up with the uh, with the irate child. Uh, did you see something in, in smaller children like that too? Well, I mean, that's, that's very interesting what you're mentioning because you, you asked also about signs that the, children, the child might be getting too much screen time and that could definitely be a sign because um, a lot of contents are designed to activate the reward system in young children. Uh, a lot of media producers have a, enough of a, a grasp on um, on psychology and early or and young children's psychology to design contents that they know children are going to want to watch and rewatch. So um, this repeated activation of the reward system can mean for some children, well, an hour is not enough anymore. Now they want two hours or three hours. So as parents can sort of be um, sensitive to this and see, well, if I remove the media, does the child go through, become irate or become irritable? Because these are signs uh, in a sense of withdrawal. So yeah. does the child go through these kinds of uh, fits and difficulties when you remove the media and that might be a sign that well it's time to taper them down or to try and and, and reduce some of their their intake of screens yeah some parents 
hesitate to do that because you just don't want to deal with the angry child that can result. And when the ch children are older, I've seen that really angry child. Uh, if the parents give in too often, I think. And it's and it's it's so important uh, during those early years, the three, four, and five year old time for children to develop the ability to regulate frustration yeah. and to handle their emotions. So uh, it can become a vicious circle if when the child becomes irate, they receive a screen, it calms them down, but they're not learning uh, how to actually deal with their frustration and to deal with their emotions. They're uh, just being given a um, a, a way to avoid to avoid uh, those negative feelings. So um, that's uh, that's I think that's very important to consider. So that would be considered kind of an addiction to those media. Yes, it's it's not. Um, we can't call it an addiction at this point because uh, I think the the DSM is still out on on this. But uh, some some scientists would uh, would argue that uh, it is possible, mm -hmm. um, but it it still remains uh, un unconfirmed at this point. Sure, you're all scientific and that's wonderful. <laughs> and I understand that as a doctor myself, I used to be very scientific and now I do more the translation into general knowledge, which is a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. And so what parents should participate in your study? So we're looking for uh, any Nova Scotia parent that has a preschooler, uh, or two, if they have the siblings can participate between the ages of two and four and a half. So um, uh, beyond that, we don't have any restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, I can give the, the information, um, yes. the detailed information to participate after. Um, I think I, I strongly encourage parents to participate because um, not only is this going to help us better understand how people are using media and how children develop uh, during a global health crisis, there, there are quite a very few studies of Nova Scotia families. So by getting this information on early childhood development and media use, well, down the line, we're hoping that we might be able to improve services that are available to parents and better understand their needs um, and how we can better resource them. So that's um, awesome. Now, where can parents go to get more information about that? I know you have a website. Yeah, so the best, uh, the best way, because our, our, our website is in French, so the best way to avoid language confusion, I'm just going to ask parents to Google NS Preschooler Screen Time Study. Okay. And I should mention that every participating parent for every, um, um, every time they participate will receive a $50 Amazon gift certificate uh, as, as a thank you for their time. Now that's absolutely lovely. That's a nice incentive that can certainly can everybody can know that can can use that. And tell me a little bit about more what is expected as a result of that study. So how can parents increase digital health in their children? Well, we're we're really hoping to be able to um, just as a first uh, as a first objective. We just want to see well what's going on in the family. So how much are they using and what are they using the most and for what reasons are they using? So sort of just to get um, a portrait of media use in uh, Nova Scotia families with young children. Mm -hmm. Then we're also hoping to be able to tease apart what are the situations in which media is the most harmful for development and which are the situations in which it's the most likely to benefit development. Because I think parents, um, it's very hard a huge challenge for many of them to limit screen time if we just give them an hour recommendation but if we could yeah. say well this type of program under this type of interaction at this time of the day is probably your best bet they can have a better hierarchy uh, of recommendations that they can use to guide their behavior wow that's really really important and really fascinating and i thoroughly enjoyed having you on the show thank My you pleasure. so much carolyn and uh, I'm very much looking forward to the results and I hope you keep me in the loop so I can publicize the results. Absolutely. And that is wonderful. And I wish you all the best. I wish I had small children. No, not really. <laughs> I have grandchildren, but not in Nova Scotia. They're not eligible for the study. And, 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 and I want to encourage all parents that have children in that age to, to participate. It's, of course, it will be in the end anonymized, so nobody can find out that it was your child that got too much screen time. <laughs> so thank you very much and all the best. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.
Bye.